Thanks for joining us here on Digital Creators. How are you guys doing? Uh, hopefully great. If you're new to, to Pixelmator, new to photo editing, then this is probably the, the video you might want to stick around for. Uh, this is a, just kind of an, a brief overview of Pixelmator 3.3, and we're we'll going into some of its features, capabilities, um, holistically at least, and later down the road I have some more in-depth tutorials on how to use some of those specific features. So um, you can go to pixelmator.com for 30 bucks. I mean, you really can't beat it. Uh, is it equivalent to Photoshop? Some of those other photo editing programs? Probably not. But for $30, not a bad deal, and it'll probably accomplish most of the things that you want it to accomplish for. So we'll get right into it here. I'll open up Pixelmator. Let it open. So when it first opens, it's going to prompt you do a new document. So this screen comes up. I'm just going to go over this real quick. Some of its some of its uh, pre settings here. As you can see, it comes up with some standard, you know, four by six, five by seven, you know, photo canvases already designated in there. And then you also have the custom down here, and you can actually save a custom. Like I have this called thumbnails eight and a half by four point five. Uh, that's the one I made through the customs. I renamed it, and that way I don't have to change the settings any, you know, when I come, come back into it. If you're not familiar with the pixels and what it equ equates to, you can always change this to inches and that'll give you a, a good guidance here. So that's 25 inches by 16. A little bigger than what we really need to be using it for. So we'll cut that down to 16 by 9. 16 inches by 9 inches. Now as far as the resolution, if you're not sure what to pick, a rule of thumb is Pixels per inch, as far as how it equates to DPI, dots per inch, and as in printing photos, 300 PPIs is equivalent to about 150 DPIs. 150 DPIs is what is generally printed for a quality photo, if you got that. So 300, you're going to get a really good quality print on it, um, depending on what you're trying to... To make, you may not need to go 300 DPI, and if you're trying to do something for YouTube, it'll probably make your file a little bit too big, and it won't accept it as a thumbnail or or whatever. So, uh, but we'll just actually cut that down to 100. Let me close this back screen or the uh, the internet here. <clears throat> when it first opens up, to get your windows here on the side you can just go to view and then you can see you, you can show or hide rollers grids guides uh, the tools layers uh, which is right over here Woo! the layers and I will click and shrink this a little bit because we're not going to be using that many and hide the colors gradients kind of cluttered here. It's kind of good to keep a clean workspace, I guess, huh? There's my brushes. These are the tools. And these are the effects. Yeah, I don't have my windows really laid out really really good right now, so apologize it, it looks kind of cluttered. But let's go back here. Uh, view. All right. I'm losing track here. I'm just kind of winging it. It's kind of a, a beginner, like I said, over overview. So this is where you can hide and show some of your some of your features right here. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, just to show you something real quick. When it comes to your window, this the canvas window right here is always the back layer. These um, tool windows are always covering that back one. So occasionally, if I grab this. It's going to say click OK because I resized it. If that's hidden, you may not see it. And you'll go to click on something and you can't figure out why it's not letting you click on anything because you haven't accepted the resizing of that yet. And then you have to pull that out, hit OK, and struggle with that kind of workspace. I'm just going to show you something uh, that makes it a little bit easier is you can pinch and whoa 
you can pinch and uh, zoom your canvas layer. So when it first opens up, if this is too big back here, I can pinch it down, double click on this top toolbar, and it'll shrink that window down to the canvas size. So I can even make it smaller if I needed to. Move it over here. So if it's buried and you minimize your window, that's a good way to resize it kind of quick. You have some pretty basic uh, tools and in, in the tools, uh, cloning, um, color select, and I'm just going to import a couple photos in here just so I can kind of demonstrate some of these for you. Uh, desktop, where is the ugly bird at? And maybe this one. Let's go with that. So as you can see, they popped up in the in the layers, and this is where your layers are. The one on top is obviously the one covering it. So if I want to switch it out, I can click and drag that bottom one up over top. Under here, you have your blending options, and it has some pretty good features for as far as effects for blending, overlay, light screen, um, linear, and they're all great depending on what you're using them. I'm not going to go over each one because them in itself uh, could almost be a video or a or a how-to to get certain effects. So we'll just keep it simple here. Let's go back over here to the left here and the tools. You know, the 3.3 .3 pixel meter talks a lot about it. its photo editing um, uh, repair tool and it actually is pretty good if you use it right. And I'll just get kind of give you a quick demonstration here. And if you go to pixelmeter.com, you'll see some demos there. This will kind of show you that anybody can really do it. Pretty impressive. Uh, let's see how it does on this on this lamp. I did find out that if you see that's pretty good, and I missed part of it right there. You see slice tool, uh, smudge. Um, you can even click on on the on the grab pointer and you'll see some other features like warp, bump, pinch, twirl that are already easily accessible. And now we'll jump down here to the effects browser. If you're looking to add an effect to one of your images uh, and you're and you're just kind of focused on color adjustments, you can click on color adjustments and it'll just bring that group up. So as you can see uh, you can change the brightness levels, uh, exposure, light, dark, auto enhance, uh, replace color, which is one of the other things they kind of advertise on their little pixelmeter.com and it, it does work pretty good. Just to demonstrate here, I'll drop the color in here and when you first drop it on your photo, whatever you click on is the color group that it's going to going to stay with. So let's see if we can change mm, let's go with the headboard. We'll keep it simple. So I just clicked on the headboard and the radius, when I go to slide that sliding bar for the radius, it will show me how much of that color it's using. So basically how, how outside of the brown am I going to go be used. And what's shown in white here is the color that's going to change. So if I want to, it's kind of too close to the, the everything kind of brown. This is a hotel room. I can't remember where I was, but let's see if we can get, isolate the gray here. Right now I know it's going to affect just about most of the the, the comforter or blanket here and, and part of the chair. And down here you can change the saturation level. And that looks horrible. Uh, but we'll desaturate it a little bit. Maybe darken it. And then you can take this color wheel here and spin it. Because I have saturation off, it's not going to show too much color. But if I was to do this, you can see how it's changing the color of that area. And then I could accept that. Uh, obviously, I don't want to accept that. I'm just kind of running through this hurry and not being precise. But if I wanted to say darken it up, and I know it didn't grab everything, but if I change the radius too much and it grabs too much of the outside, you can always do it in kind of small pieces, so I could accept that and go back to your your color, replace color, and then do it again 
on say this part and you're basically kind of doing it in pieces so you can control how much of that you're you're doing so almost makes the blanket or the comforter look kind of plastic with that high gloss there on the side let's cancel that and get out of there come back to the effects browser all right so the color adjustments um, you can balance channels let's see what else we got desaturation what I don't like about the desaturation is it doesn't give you an option to control the desaturation but there's other ways around that and late, later um, as the pixel mater 3.3 series continues and I show you some how to how to do some of these cool effects that you'll see there's other ways around that I'm going to switch to all effects so I can kind of run through them so you have your blurs um, slow up here distortions bump pinch page curl glass uh, capsule kind of cool so it basically distorts the shape into a capsule and you can even grab these points and drag them to how you want what I like about the app also is the um, the buttons the styles the the look of it it makes it easy to use I've used uh, GIMP for the longest time and I thought GIMP was a little bit confusing I didn't like how it's set up it just didn't feel right to me using Pixelmator um, it's great I, lo I love the layout the colors just the browser colors and everything it kind of it makes it easy to use you can add tile effects um, stylize distorts noise snow here let's drop one of these a sketch this is an awesome one too you can turn your let me cancel this hide my back layer right here and drop that again so you can turn your image into a, a sketch and right here you got the ability to control how much it's going to recognize those edges I mean that that is just cool in itself pretty awesome see edge cosmic threshold color hatches and and uh, patterns you can add into star shines let's see what else we got gamma swipe so as you can see it has a lot of capabilities and another kind of cool feature about it is creating kind of vector based images for web if you hit command I believe it's command shift V it turns it into vector mater and it can be used kind of creating thumbnails um, like icons avatars stuff stuff like that so it's a pretty cool feature to include that kind of capability as, of, as a vector based image if you're more than a beginner and you're looking for a vector based I probably wouldn't solely use this but if you want to make some cool buttons and logos and subscribe buttons and kind of stuff like that it, it actually works pretty good and to go back you just control command V and back let's get my pointer here so that's one of the cool features of it also if you have it and you're looking to use it and you want to kind of get more out of it hit the subscribe button stay tuned I have some video tutorials on how to how to use it a little bit better and hopefully I won't be so mundane and boring as this one but I'm always glad to have you and I will always be a novice I'm always learning if you create something share it uh, add me on Google Plus share your photos with me and let me check them out and I'll learn probably just as much from you 
as you could even possibly learn from me. So thanks for tuning in, and, and I hope to see you next time. Robert out. Thank you.